Hello guys, Luke here, welcome back to the channel. Next to me on the table is my four, uh, nearly four and a half year old actually, Alienware M17X R3 gaming laptop. I bought this laptop back in 2013. Now this laptop still has its original uh, CPU thermal paste and I've noticed recently that it's getting really hot. Actually, I was doing a bit of stress testing before and the CPU was getting up to about 95 degrees Celsius under load and that's basically <laughs> Just not acceptable. Um, mind you, this is in a room that has an ambient temperature of, of around 23 degrees Celsius, so it shouldn't be getting that high. Um, obviously, the thermal paste is drying up a little bit, needs to be replaced so they can properly dissipate that heat through the uh, copper heat pipes down to the fans and out the back. So without further ado guys, let's start to take this guy apart and um, have a look at what we're dealing with underneath. Before we go ahead and open up the laptop, I thought I'd show you what you will need for uh, doing this whole procedure. We will first need um, a couple of Phillips heads. Um, I usually rock a small one, like a, a 001 Phillips head screwdriver. Then we have just a larger Phillips head, so just one that will uh, help us with bigger screws. Of course, we have the thermal paste here, which for me, I've got a Cooler Master E2 IC Essential thermal paste. Um, I'm not exactly sure what rating this thermal paste is, but it's just, it is better than home brand thermal paste. So we're gonna be using that. Next, of course, to clean off the old thermal paste, you will need isopropyl alcohol of some sort. I've just got a Diggers brand one here, which you can pick up from Bunnings. If you're in Australia, if you're in other parts of the world, I'm sure there's other um, hardware stores or, or computer stores that have this in stock. Um, this bottle's a 125 mil bottle and this will cost you around like eight bucks or nine bucks or something like that. And like I've barely used any, I've done a few thermal paste applications and I've barely used any of this. It's still pretty much a full bottle. And of course we need something to wipe off the old thermal paste. So I've just got some tissues here. Um, you don't want to use a material that's too coarse though. You want something that's a bit soft uh, and not too uh, rough or coarse. So yeah, those are the things that you will need for this task. I have actually not done this on a laptop before and I've never opened up to the extent that I will be opening up my laptop. So this will be a first for me. So here we go. Okay, so here we have the laptop in question. Now, oh, it's a little bit dirty on top. Uh, first things we're gonna do guys is turn it over. First thing we're gonna do is take out the battery. So this is the Alienware battery here. I actually really like this battery because it's actually got a button on it that tells you how much charge it's got. Uh, it's currently fully charged because I've had it plugged in. So yeah, battery removal is the first step, guys. Next, I need my smaller screwdriver as we are going to take off the back cover, which is really easy on the Alienware M17X. You just need uh, to take out two screws and the back panel is off. So it's just these two right here. And then on the Alienware M17X, it just slides forward a little bit and lifts up and bang. You've got access to the underneath of this laptop. Uh, and you can see here, we've got our Samsung Pro SSD right here. Um, I've actually got another hard drive bay here, which is currently empty. Anyway, we have the back panel off the laptop, so we're gonna put that to the side too. Now, as you can see here, we have open access to the CPU and GPU. This is the GPU underneath here. You can see there's several heat pipes running away from it here, and we've got the CPU over here. So we'll be possibly taking a look at both. We are definitely doing the CPU today, so changing the thermal paste down on the CPU. I'm not too certain on the GPU. We may look at that. I'm gonna see how temperatures are and everything on the graphics card. But anyway, uh, you can see here we've got four screws, one in each corner of the CPU block. So we're gonna take out those four screws and have a look underneath. Let's go ahead and take out those four screws. So now that should just be able to slip. Oh. It's a bit difficult. I believe I may have to move the fan here as well, one of the back fans, to actually move the heat pipes out of the way so we can have a look at the CPU. So I'm gonna do that quickly now. Okay, here is our uh, here is one of our fans we've just taken out. I'll probably need to clean the dust out of this anyway. That could be part of the problem actually of this laptop overheating. Look at the amount of dust we're finding uh, where the fan was, guys. And there's plenty more where that came from. So anyway, now we should be able to just move this CPU block to the side like so. Ah, it comes straight off like that, look at that. So there is the old thermal paste guys um, and the heat sink there. So um, yeah, you can see how much dust is on this damn thing. Uh, we're gonna be cleaning that up of course. Now to take out the CPU, we have to use our flat blade here and there's a little uh, screw that we just turn, I believe 90 degrees gently. And here it is guys, there is our Core i7-3610QM. We are gonna now move the laptop to the side and clean the CPU. Here's our isopropyl alcohol, which we're gonna to use to clean it. Now, first of all, I'm actually gonna spray the CPU and let it sit for a little bit. This will help loosen up 
the old thermal paste so we can wipe it off easier. I'm also going to wipe the thermal paste off the heatsink here as well. And the same thing applies. We're going to be uh, applying isopropyl alcohol to this as well, letting it sit, and then we're going to wipe it clean. Okay, we've had the isopropyl alcohol sitting on both of these bits uh, for a little while now. So we're going to try to attempt to wipe off the old thermal paste. Now, it may be a bit difficult because it's been four years or so since this has been applied. So it might be quite difficult to remove, but yeah, we're just going to slowly apply the tissue to the old thermal paste. Actually, it's coming off really easily right now. Just make sure when you're holding the CPU not to grab any pins or put, it, put your fingers on the pins. You don't want to bend any pins and have to uh, fix them later. You can see there a lot of the old thermal paste is coming off quite easily. We're nearly done here. Um, you may not have to get all the old thermal paste off. As you can see, there's little bits of thermal paste next to the, the, the middle of the CPU, which um, really don't matter. You, you can pretty much leave them on. I'm going to attempt to get it off anyway. But yeah, as I said, you, if you can't get those off, uh, don't worry too much about it. And there we have it guys, good as new. It looks like a brand new CPU actually. Pretty, pretty sweet. We have cleaned uh, the heatsink here, uh, the back plate of the block. Before I put everything back in and apply the new thermal paste, I'm actually going to clean uh, the dust out of the, uh, the grill here from the fans, uh, the fans themselves as well. There's another fan in the corner of the laptop as well. Okay, I've just finished cleaning the fans and heat sinks and the grills inside the laptop, so we're now gonna put the fans back in. I'm actually surprised how easy this laptop is to actually open up and get at things and, and do things yourself. It's actually very, very straightforward how it's designed. Um, and mind you, this is a four year old plus laptop. Uh, it's actually four years and five months old, this laptop. Um, I bought it in July of 2013, showing its age a little bit in games, but still a great laptop for, especially um, I want to do some video editing on the go, so this laptop will prove perfect with its i7 CPU. Anyway, there's one fan back in, it's going to make sure they're all tightened down properly. And I cannot put the other fan back in yet because first we have to do the CPU. So now's the time where we put the CPU back in and we apply the new thermal paste. There we have it guys, there's the CPU back into the laptop there, nice and clean, uh, ready for our new application of thermal paste. Here we go with the Cooler Master uh, E2IC thermal compound. You only need a very small bit. Uh, it is a small CPU, so you only need like a P-shaped dot of thermal paste. All right, here we go, guys. Applying the new thermal paste to the CPU. So you just want to apply about a P-shaped dot, uh, maybe a bit smaller than a P, on top of the center of the CPU, just like that. Um, I'll give you guys a closer look here, but we've applied just a dot of thermal paste right on the center of the CPU like so. so. That just goes up in there. I love how this piece here doesn't even require any actual screwing down. It's just the actual backplate of the CPU, the block, I mean. Okay, we have our heatsink reseated back on. Uh, now we're just gonna screw down the screws, of course. Okay, that is fully tightened down. Now that's done. We just need to put the fan back in and we're pretty much done. There we go guys, all fitted back together. It looks like brand new. We haven't touched the GPU as you can see. If we have to, we will come back and we will apply thermal paste to the GPU as well. But for now, we're actually gonna make do with this. I'm gonna do some more testing and see how the temperatures go on the CPU. And then if the GPU is still holding us back, we will look at applying thermal paste to the GPU as well. And there we have it guys, laptop is back together with its brand new thermal compound and we're good now to turn it on and test it out and see how we go. All right guys, the laptop is plugged into power and ready to be switched on. So here's the moment of truth. There we go, she's on. Loading windows, loads the windows very fast. Uh, the SSD in here is um, very, very quick. Okay, we've hit the desktop. Let's now do a stress test on the CPU and see what our thermals are. Okay, here we go guys. We've got our stress test on the CPU running right now. Um, I've got hardware monitor open to the right as before. So we started with an idle temperature of around 49 degrees C on the package. It was a bit hot still. Remember, we were just running uh, stress testers before I actually changed out the CPU thermal paste. So it's still a bit hot from that. Right now, it's currently up to about 73 degrees Celsius on the package. I've only just started the test, so I'm going to give it a few minutes um, and see where our temperatures are after about five minutes of running the test. Okay, guys, as you can see, we've hit five minutes on the test now. Uh, running at 100% CPU load. And as you can see here, uh, for the temperatures of the CPU, we've hit a max of 80 degrees Celsius on the package. It seems to be sitting around 78 to 80 degrees Celsius um, at full load. Now this is a great improvement. Uh, this is an improvement of around 14 degrees Celsius. We were hitting 94 or 95 before, so a good 14 or 15 degrees cooler by applying new thermal paste and cleaning out the fans and heat sinks. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video, guys. Uh, my Alienware M17X R3 is now freshly blessed with brand new thermal paste, and it's definitely shown 
uh, a big improvement uh, temperature wise of course. And now the test has been running for nearly eight minutes now straight at 100% CPU load and we've still only hit 80 degrees Celsius max. The idea of making this video is so that you can do this yourself at home um, on your own laptop. Just be very careful, uh, do your research as well. Um, I didn't really need to look up anything about how to do this because I've done several uh, CPU thermal paste applications before so I was quite familiar I just hadn't done it in a laptop before this is my first laptop I've ever done and I didn't research how to do it but uh, in a laptop like this Alienware one it was quite straightforward and uh, pretty easy to do but anyway guys I hope you did enjoy this video if you did leave a like down below subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you guys around the channel all right have a good one